We saw the basics of working with forms back when we needed forms in the chapter on CRUD, but we kept our forms very simple at the time. Now let's look at the other form helpers that Rails provides to make working with forms much easier. We've already used Form4 and Text Field. Rails also offers Password Field, Text Area, Hidden Field, File Field, Radio Button, and Checkbox. I won't spend a lot of time on the HTML mechanics of these. You probably already know that, or you can look it up if you need to. Instead, let's focus on how to use these inside Rails. Let me show you an example of a made-up form that uses all of these. We've seen Form4 in action already, but notice that in this example, I give both the URL and its option hash, as well as HTML and its hash. This is where you would put all HTML options for the form, such as any CSS class that you wanted to give it. Notice that I've put in multi-part true, because this form is going to have a file upload field later on, and all forms that have a file upload need that option set. If you aren't doing file uploading, then you don't need to bother with it. The Form4 line ends with the start of a code block, that's the do, and it provides f as the local variable that will represent the object of this Form4, which in our case is subject. So from now on, we'll be able to create form fields by calling helper methods on that object. So for example, f.textField will create a text field for the subject using its name attribute. It will also pre-populate the field with the value of at subject.name if it exists. We saw that earlier. After the attribute, you can also pass in a hash of HTML options. For example, size will set the width of the text field, and max length restricts the number of characters that it will accept. Now you don't have to use that f local variable that we're working with there that represents the object. To show you this, in the second line, I'm calling the helper method again as a standalone method. The resulting code is 100% the same. It's just that in the first, we don't need to specify the object, while in the second, it becomes the first argument we have to pass in. This is useful to know if you ever need a form that needs to create or update more than one object at a time. It's one of the questions that beginners ask most often. How do I have a form that deals with more than one object? That first argument where I have the symbol subject, all it's doing is determining how this field will be named, how the submitted parameters will be grouped and named, and what object it will try to use for the default values in the form field. So you could just as easily put another object in there, like text field page, for example. And if you needed to, you could have a form that dealt with four different objects and had four different sets of grouped parameters. In the next line, the password field helper works similar to the text field helper. It just won't display the text as the user types. Text area is similar too, but the size that we provide is both for the columns and the rows. You can give the size in the short form, like I've done, or you can specify each one separately. You should know that it's part of the way HTML works, that it's not possible to specify the maximum size of a text area, so there's no option for it in Rails. If you really need to limit the number of characters you can type into a text area, you'll have to use JavaScript. Hidden field is going to put a field in the HTML source and submit its value with the form, but the browser just won't display it. File field allows you to pick a file from your hard drive to upload, and as I mentioned before, any form that has a file upload also needs to have multi-part true set. Next I have two radio buttons, because it doesn't really make sense to have just one. Radio buttons let you make an either or choice between several options. The attribute of each button is the same because the HTML field name will be the same. The second argument is going to be the value that's going to be sent if this option is selected. You'll need to put the text describing each option in the HTML yourself. The helper only creates the tag for the circular radio button, no text after it. The last one, checkbox, in this context is really good if you have a Boolean option. So for example, the attribute visible that we've been using is either true or false, so the checkbox will either be checked or not. We'll look at other ways to use checkboxes later. One important note, the HTML spec says that an unchecked checkbox should send no data, as in it won't be included at all in the form parameters. But that's a problem if you have an attribute that's set to true and you want to uncheck it on the form. If you uncheck it, then it won't send anything to your controller. And when you read in the form parameters, how can you tell whether the checkbox was unchecked or whether that checkbox was just not on this particular form? You can't. So the Rails helper does something very clever for you. When you output a checkbox using the helper, it simultaneously creates a hidden field for this checkbox with the value zero or false. If the box is checked, the form will send the checkbox value and override that hidden field. But if the box is not checked, then the hidden field value will still be sent. Either way, you'll get a value in your params for this attribute that you can check for in the controller. I think there are a few places in our application where we can make use of these form helpers, so let's go add them. So here I'm in my simple CMS. Let's start by opening up our views folder and we'll start with subjects. Let's take a look at our form. So we've got new.html.erb. Here's the form for the subject. Then we have f as the local variable that represents subject. It doesn't have to be called f. You can name it something different if you want, but the convention is just to always use f with the form object 
So we also have access to it in the partial. And if we come over and look at our form partial, you see we have f.textfieldName, text field position, text field visible. The one I want us to change right now is text field visible. Having a text field for something that's true or false is just asking for problems. The user might type something completely different in there. They might make a mistake. It's going to be much better if we can use a different user interface element like a checkbox. It's either checked or not. And this will do it. So on the subject object, call the checkbox method with attribute visible. And I don't think we need any other options. It'll either pre-check the box or not based on the current value of this subject, whether it's visible or not. So let's save that. And before we try it out, let's jump over to Pages and let's do the same thing over there. So with Pages, we can also do the same thing for Checkbox. And then let's jump over to our Sections. We can do the same thing here. We have Checkbox Visible, Checkbox once again. There's two other fields that I think we can improve on this form. One is Content Type. I think this can be made into radio buttons. And the second is Content Text Field. I think would be better if it was text area. That'll give us a larger typing area to type in a lot of content. And it's a good idea to go ahead and give it a size. We could let it use the default size, but I like to always go ahead and specify. I'll make it 40 characters wide, 10 rows long. Now to change this into radio buttons, we need to provide a helper tag for each radio button. So for the first one, it's gonna be radio button, content type, and then what is this button going to be for? The value of this button is going to be text. And then we'll need to make sure we also supply the word text after it so people know what they're checking. The helper doesn't do that for us. And then I'll just copy that line and paste it. And this one will make it HTML. And now they can put in HTML. So we can select just text or HTML. You could, of course, have other content types such as images or something. But for now, I'm just going to say the content type is really defining what is in this box here. Is it just text or is it HTML? So let's save it and make sure you've saved all of those forms and let's try it out. Let's go to our terminal, Rails server, launch the server. While it's coming up, we'll switch to Firefox, local host 3000. There we are, we're on the demo page. Let's go to subjects. There's our subjects. Let's do add a new subject and now we get our visible checkbox. Let's go back to list. Let's try pages list, add a new page. There's our visible checkbox. And let's try Sections, New, and you'll see that we get a new section form. Content type here is the radio buttons. You see how those toggle back and forth? I have a text area here, and I have my visible checkbox. Now just so you see how these can really help, let's click on Edit here. and You'll see now it pre-populates the value of each of those. If I say, all right, let's make it visible, text, this is sample content, update section. There it is. Now let's go back to list and let's click edit one more time and now you can see that it pre-populates these with the right values. And one final thing, let's just do view page source. You can actually look at the different HTML that it generated. I want to call attention to visible. Notice here is that input hidden tag. So it's putting in a hidden tag with a value of zero before we get to our actual checkbox here. And that's how it makes sure that a value is always submitted. Hopefully you can appreciate now why it's much easier to use these helper methods. They do a lot of the heavy lifting for you, and they save you from having to write out a lot of HTML plus a lot of extra code that's going to check the object to see whether those values are pre-populated for you. Instead, we just make a simple declaration for the thing that we're really interested in and let Rails do the behind-the-scenes work for us.